Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here from theCUBE. We're at our Palo Alto studios having a CUBE conversation today with Susie Wee. She's the VP and CTO of DevNet at Cisco Systems. So Susie, great to see you. Great to see you, Jeff. So before we jump in, DevNet, what is DevNet? DevNet. DevNet is Cisco's developer program. Um, you probably didn't know that Cisco had a developer program. I didn't, but, <laughs> but that doesn't surprise me because everybody's looking to engage a developer these days. Not a surprise. Yes, excellent. So, uh, yeah, with DevNet, we founded DevNet about three years ago. So Cisco had different products where they you know, wanted to create you know, developer and engage developers around them. Right. But three years ago, we actually started a Cisco-wide developer program to really create good resources solely focused on developers. Um, and it actually spans all of Cisco's products. So starting from the infrastructure, you know, with networkers that we've had going a long time, you know, taking our networking equipment, our data center, our cloud products, um, getting into the Internet of Things, our collaboration products. So we really, security, we go all the way from like infrastructure up through applications. And really DevNet is all about giving developers the resources to learn. Um, a lot of times they just want to learn coding 101 if you want to write a networking app, you know, if you're a networker trying to get up there. Right. Or if you're already a coder writing a network app, you need networking 101. Right? And then we deep dive into our APIs around network automation and orchestration and things there. Um, we help people learn. So we actually have coding resources, like if you want to write an application for a contact center, you would have to buy a contact center to test it out. Right. But we have a sandbox, a DevNet sandbox, where we have all the kit running live so that a developer can test their app right in there. Or if you want to do something for software-defined networking, we actually have live kit of routers with a product called APIC-EM, which is our SDN network automation software, and you can have that running live and write your apps there. Right. So the coding's really important in our sandbox. Um, and then we, you know, on the Inspire side, what we have is uh, creations, DevNet creations. Once someone's built something cool, then they can share what they've built and, you know, just kind of publish it. Say, this is a project I wrote, you know, here's the source code, right. here's some demos. And then, you know, finally we have uh, allow people to connect and connect through in-person events, through online communities. You know, it's really about bringing the community together to solve the big problems of like, how is IoT really going to work right, in right. this next generation? How will networks really move to network programmability? You know, how will you know collaboration take it to the next level? Right. So why why did you have to set up a separate thing, DevNet? I mean, I'm sure you've always had developer tracks in at Cisco Live and other Cisco conferences. Um, obviously, big investment. You've got a C in your title uh, for this. Why did Cisco, why did you guys decide that you had to do something different above and beyond to kind of having a developer track in your standard conferences? Yeah, well, um, you know, before what happened was actually Cisco didn't even have a developer track in its oh, they conferences. Didn't. <laughs> no, before three Oops. years ago. But, you know, we had, you know, a certain product and the product team would get really excited like you know Cisco had Jabber and said hey we're going to create it we're going to have a hackathon right, right right or you know so just products there so we created DevNet and then we started to have developer conferences at Cisco Live our big event where you know 25,000 people come to Cisco Live US right. you know 20,000 in Europe we have it in Mexico and in um, Australia so we have these events around the world, and then we, for the first time, did have developer conferences there, all about Cisco's APIs, Cisco's products, teaching networkers about programmability and software, right, right. so that the world of software-defined networking didn't just pass them by. Right. So actually, we've been getting quite a lot of momentum there, and that's all awesome. So that's the DevNet zone at Cisco Live. But what we want to do now is we're creating a new venue, something that we call DevNet Create, which is our first standalone developer conference. And um, what we're trying to do is not actually just have this be about Cisco, but we're creating an industry-wide developer conference. And the theme that we're focusing on is what I think is this big transformation going on in the industry right now about where applications meet infrastructure. Right, right. It's interesting. Um, was, there, was there a catalyst that suddenly said, oh my gosh, we need to do more for developers? You mentioned about three, four years ago. I mean, what was the catalyst? It was kind of the, the wake up call that, you know, some smart people that maybe don't work inside Cisco's four walls that we want to engage. Well, was there a specific moment, yeah. a specific thing that happened? Uh, well, there was, what happened was, uh, you know, Cisco was going around saying and acknowledging that, you know, we need to really double down on a software strategy. 
And so, you know, it's all about software. You know, we acknowledge that, you know, networking was going on and they were saying networking is moving to software defined networking. Right, Does right. Cisco want that to happen or do right. they not? So there was kind of all of that question. And so, um, you know, myself, I started, and Rick Twaniak, uh, my co-founder of DevNet, we just started lobbying and just saying, okay, Cisco, you want to have a software strategy. Awesome. Keep going on that. And yes, software with recurring revenue, that's all great. But the real reason you have a software strategy is because it's about the ecosystem. It's not just about your product. It's about right. how you interact with other products that are going on, how, you know, and, and how does that interaction happen? It happens through APIs. So you can't just build a product, build some APIs, and they will come. Right, right. You need to then really cater to developers or to networkers who want to use APIs, you know, IT and OT guys. So it's really about providing resources for them. And right. that's that whole learn, code, inspire, connect. Right. Is then we created DevNet and really provided a full set of resources for folks. And it's actually changing people's lives. It's it's interesting because um, we, we, we cover a lot of shows, right? And everyone has a developer track in their show. That's pretty standard operating procedure because everybody wants to get to the developers and they're a hard crew to get to, right? This is a competitive world. And last year we covered um, the GE Predix uh, Transform event, which was their first ever developer conference. So who would think GE is basically hosting a developer conference, but same yeah. thing, right? They wanted to get an ecosystem built around the Predix cloud, which is their, their little special IoT cloud. Um, and it was a very successful thing and, and a key part of their strategy. So very similar to what you're talking about, right? You need to have Absolutely. an engaged development community. It's all about developers, you know, and what happened is, uh, you know, in the like Fortune 100, it was something like 35% of Fortune 100 companies are now having developer sites right. and published APIs, right. which is incredible. So these are things like you know Visa and Mastercard, you know GE and others. So it's just real business. <laughs> right, right, right. So in getting together for this, um, doing a little homework, I see you know you you got a blog that you just recently put out talking about really the change in the way this whole world is working. Really, where before you had your infrastructure. And the, and, the, and the app team had to build to that infrastructure, but now it's kind of flipped on its head, right? Now the apps are kind of dictating what happens to the infrastructure. And as you point out here, and we, we always joke about this too, that with, with IoT, right, people are, people are things too. So now you've got uh, you know, a whole different <laughs> way to interact. The application has to interact beyond the simple kind of three horsemen of classic IT, which is storage, uh, compute, and networking, right? Yes. Because now you have things, you have people, IOT's coming down the pike, Mobile World Congress was last week, it's all about 5G, it's a big Absolutely. IOT enabler, everybody loves seeing autonomous cars drive through the neighborhood. So it's a very different world, a very different application world that these developers are entering into. It's amazing, yeah, and I think that you know we haven't even reached the potential of what applications can do. Oh, barely. And it sounds right. so mundane, because yeah. you're like, okay, an application. I right. use it on my computer, right. I have a keyboard and a mouse. Or then it got really exciting, like mobile apps. I have mobile apps on my device, which is awesome. I can take them anywhere, and you know, you have that whole social mobile and all of right, everything right. changed there. But now you get to this world of IoT and cloud, and apps take on this whole new meaning. You know, so where, as you know, as you said before, an app just ran on top of the infrastructure. Right. You know, now with cloud, it changed because you started to get to DevOps, and you're like, wait a minute. Okay, so now an app develops, but they develop and deploy, and that has some kind of interaction. Um, but you go even further, and then what you have now is you have you know, apps interacting with the infrastructure through DevOps and through APIs as well. And before, as you said, all the network, all the infrastructure did for you was provide network compute and storage. But when you think about the Internet of Things, all of a sudden things come on board, and then you can all of a sudden get, you know, create entirely new apps using right, the sensors right. and everything. You take this building, and once this building gets digitized, you know, right. then you have your HVAC system, your badging, your security cameras, that's all cool stuff, but imagine how to write an app on top of all that, right? right? So you have tons of kind of things and data, and then, you know, with the place, you can actually start to get indoor location, wireless access points are giving you location data. Right. So you're in a shopping mall, you know where people are, just because their Wi-Fi, even if you're not connected, the Wi-Fi network knows where you are, right? Yes. Just because it's searching for MAC addresses <laughs> and things like that. 
you can all of a sudden get, you know, information that's really, really interesting for business. You know, where are people hanging out? You know, how much time are they spending in different places? That's information any app developer would die for. Right. So the right. infrastructure is not just providing connectivity, but it's providing really interesting information right. that an app developer wants to use. And, and from all over the place, right? Public databases, proprietary databases, APIs here, APIs there. and, and Absolutely. Um, and that's crazy. Like, so just the data is from all over the place. It's not just this nice contained, here's the sensors on my device, right. but you're now bringing together data from around the world. You're working on a cloud infrastructure. Um, there's you know, data sovereignty issues in terms of where the data can be. There's kind of security issues. Uh, but you want, like the app developer just needs access to all of this, but you need to be very, um, you know, careful, right, and right. you know, you need to architect your system right. so that it can really work well. And it has to be software defined, right? Because there's all, you know, sometimes you might not have a good connection. Sometimes you might not have access to that data. There's, there's so many parameters that define this kind of software interaction. Absolutely. That just a hardcore machine to machine, you know, wire connection isn't going to get it done if there's not software to be able to buffer and, and deal with all these various conditions. Absolutely, and you know, so you think about, okay, why do you need software-defined networking or software-defined infrastructure? It used to be that, um, let's say that you're, again, taking a shopping mall and IOT enabling it, right? You're digitizing, you're putting in all these sensors, very cool. Um, like when you go home, you just kind of put it up and you put on your, you know, sort of your baby cam and right. you know all of right. that kind of stuff. But you go to work, and then all of a sudden you're like dealing with proprietary systems and things there. You have to really worry about security. You know, you go to a Tesla manufacturing plant. You need to worry about security, like who has access to the data. So when you start to put these things online, what matters is, um, you know, you put picture. Your, surveil your video surveillance cameras, your badging system, your HVAC system, and then just your you know, video conferencing systems, right. they have very different security requirements about them. So how do you put them on your network in a secure way? You want to segment your network so that each of these is on different network segments. Right. Right. They have the right access. But an app developer doesn't want to deal with all that. So what you want is you know, to be able to put them on, configure your network, what the software defined nature lets you do is to do it in an automated way. Like before you would set up your network, get it all configured, and never touch it again, <laughs> right? right? But right. with the software defined, you can just say, hey, create a secure network segment with this group of devices, get the data going across, right? And then now allow my you know, applications to access it. So you can actually start to use all of these capabilities of a software defined infrastructure to help app devs, right? So this is such a huge category um, of stuff going on. Such, I want to say attack surface because we were at RSA a couple of weeks ago, but even really just opportunity surface in terms of the developers and where they can add value. What are you guys focusing on at DevNet? And we'll talk about it in a minute. You've got an event coming up in late May, which we're excited to bring the cube there. I think it's your first one. But yes. of all the things we've talked about, what are you and your team and what should people that go to DevNet create you know, be, what is your main focus? So our main focus there, it's actually two areas, but it's IoT, so the Internet of Things, and then just app developers wanting to create new IoT apps. Um, but then we're looking at how does that hit the infrastructure, right? So again, is how can you, you know, have IoT developers, cloud developers come together to really get the most out of this next generation of apps? Right. Um, we actually break that down in a few ways. So, you know, so you said there's the Internet of Things. Um, so it's kind of like where, where do applications meet things? Um, but in addition to me, it's where do applications meet people? It's where do applications meet places? So, you know, it's all about, to me, the Internet of people, places, and things um, in terms of how these things come together. So, uh, so if you just kind of dive into each of those, it's, it's uh, you know, again, it's not easy to figure out how to write an app <laughs> for a business that, you know, again, has, you know, is, is instrumented with IoT, right, that has, right. you know, location capabilities, that has kind of analytics throughout. But we want to talk about how to truly expose all that to app devs um, so that you can really get not just a kind of vertically like closed proprietary system of apps, but you can really have the full world of app developers, you know, hacking on and building on all of this stuff. Right. 
Okay, so how do people get involved? We'll, we'll, so let's get the, the full plug. So it's May 23rd and 24th, Yes. San Francisco. Yep. Do you have a venue? Yes, so uh, so DevNet Create is May 23rd, 24th, San Francisco at Bespoke. So at it's Bespoke. in the Westfield Mall up okay. there. Um, it'll fit about you know 450 people, so it's a little bit more of a cozy atmosphere. Uh, but we're super um, excited because we want you know people to come. We want people to submit talks for you know to be speakers right, on right. areas that you think are critical here. Um, and we want it to be one where you can interact, right? You can interact with the speakers, you can interact with each other, right. because we totally want to, you know, jam on this area of where applications meet infrastructure and figure out together as a community. Okay. So, what do people need to do to get involved? They can. You're looking for speakers, or we're looking for speakers. Okay. You can actually go to devnetcreate.io. Okay. And that's where our whole site is. Um, you can submit a talk. Okay. Um, actually, you can do more. You can submit, you know, a technical talk if okay. you want to present. Say, hey, here's a cool thing that I built, or here's a key technology issue that I solved. Here's an API and platform that I used. Um, also, because we wanted about learning and hands-on coding, you can submit a workshop about, you know, your API or your platform that you think is really critical to make this work. Um, can, so. You know, and we'll actually have you know stations set up so people can do hands-on coding on your API if you okay. want. Um, can create learning labs. So these are online learning labs that'll then be available to everybody forever. Um, so to just get people up there and teach them about you know the platform and the API and teach or about some new technology topic. Um, so all of those are possible for the uh, venue itself. In addition, though, we actually want to start the conversation now. And so what we're doing is we've created a Medium blog post, uh, a blog publication okay. on DevNet Create. Okay. And we actually invite everybody to submit their thoughts on where applications meet infrastructure and what it means to them. So just everybody's going to have different ideas. What's the hard technical problem? Is it changing? Do you believe that it's, you know, should they just continue to be separate? Right, right, <laughs> you know, right. what do the boundaries look like? Right. Where does it matter? So I would love to get thoughts from you and from everybody about where apps meet infrastructure. We want to continue the conversation on the cube, but would love to get that conversation going now online as well. So if people can write some stuff, we'll bang around at it. We'll include your publication in our, you know, DevNet Create publication. Okay, great. And then and when May comes, we'll continue talking in person. That's right. So we've got we got a couple online. more. So have you already been collecting data, or is it, we're st are you still kind of kicking this off so people get an opportunity to get uh, to get in the door early? We're we're kicking it <laughs> off now. Where uh, you can uh, submit your you know tech talk or workshop or learning lab now. Um, you can submit a medium publication now. Like just share your thoughts with us now. Yeah. Oh, awesome. All right. So we'll uh, look forward to watching the content grow pre-show. And then that'll really set us up for an awesome show uh, there in late May. Excellent. All right, Susie. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes of your time to stop by and, uh, and give us kind of the breakdown of, of DevNet Create. Should be exciting. May 23rd, 24th in San Francisco. We'll be there. Hopefully, you'll be there. I know Susie will be there. I'll be there. All right. <laughs> thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Jeff Rick here at theCUBE. Thanks for stopping by.